hello and welcome to my channel please like share and subscribe if you like this video and thank you all so much for watching thank you thank you thank you to my day ones twos and threes thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in that means well thank you so very much i appreciate you all and welcome 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 this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only so everything is alleged some is not and the fair act use is in my description box y'all so let's get to it let's get to it um first i want to say happy friday i hope everybody is having a wonderful day please stay safe and all that good stuff please stay aware of your surroundings and please y'all watch the company that you keep because it just may save your life or keep you out of trouble okay y'all so i want to start this video off talking about mo3 y'all today is mo3's birthday shout out to dallas texas um the north i know y'all been getting hit with some really bad weather i've been paying attention so prayers up for everybody that's going through what they're going through but you know it amazes me that the where he's from that a lot of people it's, it's the weather is so bad where he's from that area been getting hit up so you know prayers up for the families um i like to say happy birthday to this legend but i know he can't rest he cannot rest right now because he hasn't received justice yet but i just wanted to go into you know where it all started y'all miss lowdown started really from mo3 doing mo3 this is where our, I pretty much became a household name in Dallas, starting to do Mo3 videos. And during that time, up until now, um, my eyes has, just like I open y'all eyes to a lot of things, um, Mo3's case and his presence um, spiritually has opened my eyes to so many things that I didn't know before I started doing his videos. Um, he was the reason that, you know, I dug so deep in just hours and hours. It was, it was almost like, y'all, it was almost like the Kanika Jenkins case when everybody was just couldn't sleep and up hours and hours. This is how, you know, me and my sis was with Mo3. We were up hours and hours. I had bags under my eye just going through posts and stuff because as fast as i was reading them it was as fast as people was erasing it and you know they were erasing messages left and right with mo3 gates so we had to go through everything screenshot everything get the proof this and that because they were you know somebody was telling people in the inner circle that it had something to do with taking him out erase this erase that get that down you know they were blocking people out of their you know social media platform it was just so much going on y'all but during his case opened my eyes up to so much so much evil in this world um i, I had no idea you know i knew that some of these churches and pastors were no good i knew that because a lot of them is greedy but i didn't know the extent i, I didn't realize that it was so many dirty cops out here and a lot of cops that were retiring they were going into the business of funeral homes and stuff like that with these dirty pastors and all kind of stuff, y'all. And celebrities wanting to be silent partners going into this type of stuff. And I didn't realize the stuff that I, I, I never would have ever known the stuff that I know now if I would have never started doing all three's case. I wouldn't have known that. Police officers working with, you know, criminals. And ex-police officers working with criminals and pastors working with criminals and their sons out here committing crimes and then getting wasted on social media and going back bragging about, you know, we'll take you out and then my father will do the pe do the, the, the service. Y'all, this is what people were saying, Robert Gomez, and he's one of the people that they say that, you know, whoever that was that was chasing on three, chased mo3 into robert gomez and he will he is the pastor's son and they are all connected with funeral homes so it's like their businesses go hand in hand 
and a lot of people that go to these churches and stuff they feel like especially in dallas they feel like you know when they give a contribution to that contribution box they're contributing to you know god's house and this and that and that and this but in re all actual reality they are contributing to criminals to a, a crime syndicates y'all and I, I never would have known this stuff. I never would have known to, you know, dig. I, I don't even think I would have started doing Gematria, to be honest with y'all, if it wasn't for Mo3. I wouldn't have started doing that. Gematria took you to another place. These people um, that's so evil in the industry, they, um, they live by this Kabbalah stuff. And you cannot go into trying to figure out about Kabbalah unless you start doing Gematria. You can't because this is what they live by and a lot of stuff that they do is coded. This is how they speak amongst each other. This is how they throw stuff in your face and you not even know what it is unless you go into, you know, learning what these numbers mean and all of this stuff. So I don't think I would have ever, ever, ever um even gotten into that if it wasn't for him because he was he was the one that taught me about you know numbers and colors and names and certain things pop up you have to pay all of this attention because this is all connected i wouldn't have known that if it wasn't for mo3 so i you know I, I have to thank him for that for where i am right now you know thank you to the people that have been coming in my comment section saying oh you got seventy thousand subscribers right now Oh, Lord, it took me a long time to get there. But at the same time, you know, every one of the subscribers that's here, I appreciate you all. Okay. And I think this is why I was doing a little sippy sippy last night. Because every time it gets to the point where it's around his birthday, I, I just feel sad. Because I still feel like, even though the majority of people is locked up, that has something to do with, you know, his passing. Um, they're not locked up for, for what they did to him. They're locked up for other things. And it makes me sad sometimes. And I'm trying to, each year, I think I'm getting a little bit stronger to handle it. Um, but it's not over. It's not over. And if it's not over, that means my job is not over either. That I have to, you know, um, get justice for this man. Because a lot of people ain't really trying to get justice for him. It's about money. It's about, you know, every year I notice a lot of bloggers, they start talking about him or they have a new storyline every year around his birthday just to, you know, get people, you know, attention and they really ain't doing nothing but, you know, collecting. And I, I never wanted to, people to think that it would be like that for me. I didn't, I, this is why I do, you know, cash giveaways and uh, for holidays and stuff like that because I like to give back. And, um, I don't want to seem like that type of blogger. I don't want to ever be put in that inner circle of just greed. Because when I see some of these bloggers doing the things that they are doing, um, it makes me think about the churches that keep passing that, that, you know, plate around. And they're not helping the members when the members need help. But they driving these fancy cars and these nice houses and this and that and that and this. And just using the members in the churches. And this is what some of these bloggers remind me of. You know, they brag about what they make in every month. And then they turn around and beg other people that's getting up going to nine to fives. You know, they and they actually be sending them one, two, three hundred dollars. And I'd be like, oh, Lord, do y'all even understand that you're being scammed? But, you know, it's sad. But I have to just sit back and be quiet about it. You know, I have to just try to hold my tongue. But this is what I see. Just it is no difference than going to these churches and they keep passing that bucket around every few minutes, that contribution little bowl, every few minutes. And this is what this reminds me of. It truly does. But I want to also say I have had to go up against some of his enemies since I started doing them on three days. Um, ops, his ops reaching out to me on social media platforms and stuff like that going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them having to put in complaints on them it was just a lot y'all it really was and it it kind of prepped me for the next because you know with all the signs and everything that i went through in mo3 this is why it was so easy to find out that young Dolph's case was connected to um mo3's case in so many ways this is how i knew that there were so many connections 
because of everything that I went through, because of everything that was brought to light when, um, while I was doing my three case and I still am just because I don't talk about it a lot now is because I've given it everything that I know. I have given Mo3 case everything that I have and then some. And this, I don't want to keep just repeating the same thing over and over again. If there's new stuff coming out, then I, I talk about it. But um, I don't want to be like these bloggers that sit back and make up, conjure up some stuff, have people calling them and, you know, sending the subscribers off. People be literally calling in to some of these bloggers. And it's funny now. But it's, sometimes it don't be so funny because I be like, Lord, help these people, you know, wake up from some of this mess. The, some of these bloggers are playing games. They have people calling there and pretend like, oh, I was this person on the expressway. And I saw this. And I'm a, I'm a witness. and I'm a, They have people calling in, making up stuff. And it seems so similar to what happened. But people don't really know, so they don't realize that a lot of stuff is fraudulent. And they, oh, he he is really trying to find out what's going on with, with Mo3 or she. And then I laugh. I laugh at some of these bloggers that call themselves doing this whole Mo3 stuff. And they steal some of the footage from, and they go back to my old videos and they say the same thing that I just said. I wouldn't pay it any attention, but some of my subscribers, they they will uh, send me information and be like, they over there saying the same thing you didn't see it and acting like they doing something. <laughs> and I just laugh it off. But, you know, long as, you know, it, the message is getting out and it keeps his name alive and it keeps the hope for justice. I'm not going to trip on it. Sometimes they pee me off. I'm not going to lie. And, and to be honest with you, I literally would have worked with some of these other people that did this whole, uh, and that call themselves doing this Mo3 stuff. But the reason why I don't work with them is because of the fact that if you would take an old video and chop it up, if you would take an old video of me on, you know, another platform and chop it up and pretend like I'm on your platform when you run around and talk about me like a dog and then you turn around and ask me to be on your platform um and when I refuse you go and chop up videos and pretend like I'm on a live with you you know I just think that's an act of desperation and if you would do things differently then I wouldn't have man working with you you know what I'm saying it's just so much and then it just seemed like a lot of them is just fake that they really ain't trying to do nothing. And if you if you really want to get justice for Mother and you want to name your stuff after him and all of this other stuff, why harass somebody that's been there? That's, you know, been there 10 toes down through it all. Like, why harass me <laughs> if you really want justice for him? It's, it's a lot. Like I told y'all, it's so much that don't make sense. I never realized how... I didn't grow up around a lot of people that were just evil and dirty and backstab you and all kind of stuff. And um, you think they're your friend, even family, and they trying to holler at somebody that you like or, you know, it, it, I didn't been through those type of dirtiness and this and that and that and this. I have in my life span, but I've never seen the dirty that I've seen since I've you know, start doing the Dallas stories. And a lot of people reached out to me because I couldn't understand it. And I'm like, how can somebody be this dirty that you would, you conjure up, let's put him in a movie just so we could keep up with, you know, where he is and timelines. And when we get ready to take him out, we could take him out on a certain day because we're going to have him come down and here to renew this, you redo this movie scene or so he thought. But he had already said he was finished. And the movie was finished. Um, people put you in a movie and put you in insurance policies. I was like, oh my God, I've never, I started feeling like it's Dallas just, to, <laughs> they don't call them dirty, dirty, dirty Dallas for nothing. And when I started saying that, a lot of people started reaching out to me and saying, Miss Lowdown, like everybody in Dallas is not dirty. And Mo3 do have a lot of people that love him. It's just like Dolph. Dolph had a lot of people in Memphis that loved him. Um, Mo3 has a lot of fans. He has lots of people that love him. And believe it or not, 
I brought a lot of awareness about Mo3 to even a lot of people on the outside of Dallas. A lot of people would send me um, emails after I started doing his stories. And they was like, I didn't know Mo3 until I ran into your page. And when I started learning about him, I liked him. I liked how he carried himself. Um, he was a little bitty something, but at the same time, he stood up to the giants. And a lot of people, you know, grew respect for Mo3 after um, they started coming to my page and going back hearing his story and my journey going through everything that he went through. And there's probably still so much more to learn about him as well. Um, but I have found to respect Mo3. And even though he's not here, I think he's still here in spirit. And as far as his kids, um, his beautiful, beautiful kids, his babies, his heart. I hope that, I know it hurts them that he's not around, but at the same time, he's still around in spirit. I think that he's watching over them. I I hope that they, you know, is getting through these times by just celebrating the life of Mo3 instead of the passing. Enjoy those videotapes that you have of him. Um, enjoy all of the, you know, moments that you shared with him. Use him as somebody that sets an example for you that of what not to do. Because his biggest fault was trusting people. And I said this the other day about um, Biggie. If you are an upcoming artist and... You're planning on leaving your management or the label. Your your time is up for that label and this and that and that and this. Keep everything on the hush-hush until it's time. Until it's that time. Don't talk about it to nobody. Act as if you are just happy, tickle pink with who you have. Until you're not. You go and you speak with that lawyer and you get, you know, cross them, them T's and dot them I's. And don't even tell your manager that you're not happy with what's going on. By the time he knows that you're not happy, he's sitting at that table with that lawyer in front of him. And that, and that gives you a peace of mind that he's not going to try to line you up. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Take this as a learning experience on what not to do. If you are not happy with your manager and you want to leave um maybe it's time to cut off all ties with that person and like i said get you a, a good lawyer and cut out total total ties with that person do not be making plans behind that person back to leave and or in their face and then expect them to not line you up when you are worth more money gone than here because this is how they see things now. And this is how they get rid of problems. When you, A lot of people don't understand how a lot of these managers wants to take the place of the artist, even though they have no talent. Me and my day ones, twos, and threes, we sit back and we watched Rain sit back and watch Mo3 do interviews and stuff like that. And I know it sounds crazy. But you can literally see the look on his face that he wanted to be that person doing those interviews. He wanted that spotlight, that Mo3. He wanted his life. He wanted his women. He wanted his life. He wanted his money. He wanted to be able to, you know, sit in them seats and do those interviews. And he got that. He became a millionaire after Mo3 passed. Working deals out, putting insurance policies on artists. And... I'm going to say this. A long time ago, you know, he was putting up all these posts and people were sending me the, some of this stuff, some of the stuff I was running into. And Mo3's manager was um, pretty much nicknaming himself after P. Diddy. 
And people were sending me stuff like, this guy want to be like P. Diddy. He, he got nicknames after P. Diddy and this and that and that and this. And it's not hitting me until now because when they were sending me that at first, I was like, oh, he want to be rich like P. Diddy, uh, you know. And, you know, I did know about how P. P. Diddy treated his artists. He didn't care for them. He just used and abused them and pushed them to the side and went on to the next to like, collect money. But we didn't know the severity of everything that P. Diddy was into until now. And when you want to be like somebody like P. Diddy, um, that says a lot. That says a lot, especially what's going on right now. P. Diddy is the butt end of the joke on everybody's tongue right now. P. Diddy is, everybody's disgusted with him right now. So think about that right now, y'all. Is that the future of Mothery's manager? Because he did the very same thing that, you know, P. Diddy did in some ways. He did. P. Diddy was a backstab. He, um, when people wanted to leave him and didn't want him to be management anymore, they mysteriously passed away. And he gained off of them. And that's the same thing that, you know, Mo 3's manager did. So we all have to, you know, pay attention, y'all, to everything. Even somebody just joking about wanting to be somebody because that clearly could be his future too. Once the real truth come out about everything about Mo 3, um, it's a possibility that his manager is going to go down too. His manager played a huge part in, you know, a lot of beefs that Mo 3 was having. People are already, like I said before, already jealous of him. And the manager would be so petty instead of lining up shows or doing something else. He was beef, make, pushing that beef. Just like Puffy pushed that beef between, you know, Biggie and Tupac. He sit back, push those two into beefing history. Okay, y'all? And when both of them are gone now, he is making money off of them. He's still making money off of Biggie right now. That's just how good of an artist that Biggie was. That's how big of an artist the Tupac Nim was. Okay? He's still making money off of that beef right now. And it's the same thing with Mo3. His manager was petty is all outdoors. He was out here starting stuff between other people that didn't like Mo3 already and taunting them. I have it all on tape, y'all. I have everything. He taunted people and made them hate Mo3 even more than they hated him. And I didn't think they could hate him anymore. But he, he made that happen. And once that beef got to where it got to, and what did you know everybody say about Puffy? Puffy ended up being the one that had something to do, allegedly, 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 with Tupac being taken out. He had something to do with Biggie being taken out. Now, let's go back. Ask yourself this question. Did Mo 3's manager have something to do with him being taken out? Seriously, y'all. Did he even play a part in Mo 3 taking out uh, 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 people on the other side? Ask yourself this question. Was he, the, you know, the sneaky link that was running back? Telling, you know, Mo3, this person, I found out this person is the one that took out this person that was close to you. I found out this person has something to do with that. And this is how you get rid of two birds with one stone. And this is how you become millionaires. Because you line up your artists. And this is the stupid part about the whole thing. He could have made millions if he just would have been right by Mo3. They could have been making even more money. They don't see the bigger picture. It's a reason that some of these artists do not want to stay with their managers. It's a reason why some of these artists do not want to stay with some of these record labels. And if you are managing an artist... And that artist wants to cut ties with their record label. You're supposed to rock with that artist. You want, you're supposed to want what's best for him. And go with him wherever it is that he wants to go. If Rainwater wouldn't have um, been in such 
if he wouldn't have been so much against what Mo3 wanted to do with his career and where he wanted to take it, I think Mo3 would have still kept him. If he wasn't so petty on, on these labs and doing the things that he was doing and nitpicking and starting stuff, I think Mo3 would have wanted to keep him. If he just would have still had that hunger instead of, you know, to make money and, and, and just to really just blow up our, Mo 3's career, um, he would have still became a millionaire. Mo 3 would have been in movies by now, big movies, not these little petty little movies that, you know, they were doing, the lineup movies, okay? He would have been in bigger movies. I think he would have took his acting more serious afterwards if he would have lived through this one. But, you know, this is what they lined up to take him out. Um, he would have been in commercials. He would have had more music. I think would have, he would have had music all, all over the place with different, you know, artists. I think he would have been huge out here. And they knew it too. But this is the problem with a lot of these people that work with other people to take out somebody from their own city and state instead of helping their city and state rise to the top. Mo3 would have took Dallas to places it never been before, I do believe, y'all. He would have had them on the map. Instead of them all working with him, they wanted him out the way. And that's what I tell you about jealousy. Jealousy is so... That is such a, a, a bad, you know, um, thing that people don't realize just how bad jealousy is. Hate and envy and just jealousy of someone. And... and you got to ask yourself this question. Why do you hate us in person so much? They haven't done nothing to you. You have to, if you really have these really truly bad feelings for somebody and you just, every time somebody mentioned that person, hey, oh, I can't stand this person and da, 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 and you just going off talking about them and this and that and that and this. Um, I, to me, I, I be believing sometimes that it ain't really hate. You really want to be that person. You want to be like that person, but you don't know how. And that person outshines you in so many ways and it pees you off. So it's really like an obsession, to be honest. This is what I feel about people that just hate on people for no reason. This is how I feel about that. But anyway, y'all, I, I didn't want to just keep going on and on and on and on. And I can and I could talk forever about Mo3 because I done been through it and back and back and through it again. Okay, y'all? When it have came down to him, and you all know how much of that I, you know, have love for Mo3. And, um, I, like I said, I can go on and on and on, y'all. But anyway, to, um, shout out to Dallas, because I know that you all are still missing Mo3. A lot of people still be sending me emails saying how much they miss him. And just miss his laugh, and him doing his laughs, and all of that stuff. So, um, salute to Mo3, salute to Dallas, and, um, you know, salute to them baby mamas, take care of them babies, y'all. And I hope that one day that Mo3 family can stop being, you know, selfish and all in their feelings and get it together and realize what they lost. Not just, you know, look at the gain of Mothri's passing, but realize what they really, truly lost. One of God's children. And he was going to make a huge difference. And even though he's not here, he still is making a difference in a lot of people's lives. So, um, shout out to everybody that truly, truly, shout out to all the Mothri fans that still been waiting. And every time. Every single time you put up a video, they click on that notification real quick just to see if there's an update on Mo3. Hang in there, y'all, because we still we still want justice for Mo3. And we're going to get it eventually. We are going to get it. Sooner or later, there is going to be um, something huge that's going to come out of this. And I think this is why everything has stalled because you know, of a lot of information that has been pushed on the internet and all of that. I think that, you know, they're going to, you know, investigate all of that stuff. Because whereas they was going to look like they was going to rush through it, now it seems like they're taking their time. And taking that time could be a good thing sometimes, y'all.
taking their time could mean that they are going through everything with a fine tooth comb on talking to a lot of witnesses because a lot of people played a part in this y'all there were parties that was held afterwards a lot of stuff you know so many posts and people that's connected to this person that person and that person then you got to wait till some people get themselves in some trouble and they want to work a deal out so they're going to talk then so it's a lot of things that is going on in the background so you all we just gotta you know pray on it and you know and leave it alone put it leave it in god's hand because he's going to handle this he is going to take care of this one way or another those people that played a part um they're going to be dealt with okay y'all so anyway um happy birthday mo three May you eventually rest in peace, because I know I can't say rest in peace now, because you ain't trying to hear that right now. You want justice, as do we. Okay, y'all? Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe if you liked this video, and thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.